Hey there, this is Andrew and in this video we are taking a look at the post query setting inside Jet Engine's listing grid widget for displaying post dynamically based on specific conditions. This is actually a legacy feature since Jet Engine now has a dedicated custom query builder for more advanced filtering and reusability for many listings. So why is this setting still here? Well, it's a quick and easy way to filter posts right inside Elementor while building a listing. Before we dive in, quick reminder, if you enjoy Crocoblock videos, don't forget to like and drop a comment. It's a huge motivation for our team and helps us bring you even more awesome content. Let's get started. We're inside the Elementor editor where we have a listing grid widget all set up and ready to display posts from a solar company's CPD using a connected listing. The listings in the grid showcase categories as tags and pull in detail from custom meta fields, things like title, year of foundation, description and more. Now if you head over to the listing grid general settings, you will notice that there's no post query here. That's because this is a legacy setting and to access it, we need to click the click here link inside the notification about query options. Once we enable it, a couple of new tabs appear right under the usual custom query settings. The first tab is Post Query. Let's open it up and take a closer look at what we've got inside. Right at the top, there's a field displaying the post query. This will either show a query you've already created or give you the option to create a new one when you click on it. Next to it, there's a copy button, making it easy to create a new query with similar settings. Below that we see an add item button for creating and activating a new query for this listing from scratch. When we have multiple queries, we need to define the relation between them, which is done through the following select fields, where the first one is for cases when we have more than one meta queries and the second for taxonomy queries. In this fields, and option displays results only if posts match all activated queries or displays results if posts match any of the queries. So now that we've got the basics, let's check out the available settings for the creating post queries. We'll go through them one by one, and whenever we can create a query that's relevant to our current list of posts, we'll demonstrate it in action. When creating a query, the first step is to select a query type from a dropdown. There are five types to choose from. The post and author parameters query type allows you to filter posts by their default features. With this option chosen, the next field you'll see is include post by IDs, which lets you display posts based on their specific post IDs, separated by commas if needed. You can also use the dynamic tags button to pull values from various dynamic sources, as with most other input fields in the post query settings. The exclude post by IDs field is the opposite of the previous one, letting you exclude specific posts by their IDs. The get child of field allows you to display child posts of a specific parent post by entering the parent post IDs. Get post with status option allows you to filter posts by their status, like publish or private. For post by author, you can choose to display post by current listing author the queried user, useful when viewing post of an author whose profile is currently being viewed, or input a specific author's ID, provided your post type supports the author data feature. The search query option allows you to display posts that contain a specific word in their title or description. Finally, the get post from store option shows items that belong to a specific data store. You can find a video on our channel that explains how data stores work and how to use them effectively for many purposes. Now we'll switch to the second post query type. The order and offset query lets you adjust the position of your grid items or order them in a specific way. Post offset allows you to skip a certain number of posts before displaying them. For example, entering one will make the second post in the list the first visible post on the grid. Order lets you arrange the post in ascending or descending order, whether by numeric values, dates or alphabetically. Order by defines the value that will be used for ordering or offsetting or both, and there are several options to choose from. You can order posts by default values like post ID, author, title, slug name, post publication date or the date of the last modification. There are two ordering options that require page attributes to be enabled for your custom post type, parent 
and menu order. If page attributes are enabled, which is done during the custom post type creation, you can set a custom order for post by entering a number in the order field in the post editor. Then by selecting menu order as the order by type, post will follow this custom order, regardless of their other properties. The page attributes parent dropdown in the post editor lists all posts within the same CVD, allowing you to easily assign a parent post. Then choosing parent as the order by type will sort posts based on their parent's creation date. These parent-child relations can also be used with the get child of setting in the post and author parameters query type. Other sorting options include random, which shuffles posts on each reload, comment count, sorting by the number of comments, and relevance, which ranks posts based on search relevance and requires additional search functionality like JetSmart filter search filter activated for the current listing grid. The meta value option sorts posts based on custom meta fields. For example, if a meta field stores the year a company was established, you can input its meta key and order companies from newest to oldest or vice versa. This option also lets you specify the meta type to ensure correct sorting. For simple numbers, both numeric and car types work, but for dates you'll need date and for values with decimals, like user ratings, decimal meta type is required. If you're using meta query, which we'll cover later, you can assign it a meta query class code, select meta class as the order by type, paste the code here and group post based on that query. The post within the query will then be ordered by post date or title depending on the meta type set in the connected meta query. Lastly, the preserve post ID order option keeps post in the order you specified in the include post by IDs field. Without this, by default, post would be displayed numerically by their post IDs. The next query type is text query, which allows sorting posts based on their assigned terms also referred to as categories. After selecting the text query, you'll first choose the desired taxonomy from the drop-down menu. If your taxonomy name is stored in a meta field and you want the taxonomy to be dynamically selected, enter the meta field's name in the relevant input field. The next field defines the operator, which determines how posts with the selected terms are handled. The in operator displays posts with the chosen term or any of the multiple terms you select. The NOT IN operator hides posts with the selected terms. The AND operator shows posts that must be assigned to all chosen terms. The EXIST operator displays posts assigned to any term within the chosen taxonomy, while NOT EXIST shows posts with no term assigned. Finally, the last two fields allow you to input the terms for the text query. The first field lets you manually type in the term or terms separated by commas, and the second field enables you to input a meta field name if you store the terms names dynamically. Next is the meta query type, which filters post based on values in a custom meta field you specify by its field name. Similar to the text query, you need to choose an operator and a value to compare against for filtering. For available operators, some are specific to numeric values like greater than, greater or equal, less than, equal or less, between and not between. Other operators are general. Equal requires an exact match between the meta field value and the input value. Not equal shows posts that don't match exactly. Like searches for the input value within the meta field content, while not like excludes posts that contain the value. The in operator allows multiple values separated by commas and displays posts with a meta field that contains an exact match to one of those values, while not in shows posts that have none of the values entered. Finally, the rejects and not rejects operators are used to pattern matching with the meta field content. The dynamic tags button next to the value field suggests you can dynamically source values from various sources such as custom fields, related items metadata and more. 
For example, imagine you have a set of blog posts about different service types offered by companies featured in your posts. Each of these blog posts has custom fields with values related to the services. In this case, you can display a listing grid on a blog post template and use the dynamic text button to pull the matching service values from the post custom field. This lets you dynamically link the grid items to the relevant services. The or get value from the query variable field provides another way to dynamically source values. Here you can enter a query variable name from the URL of the page where the listing grid appears and the meta query will then use the value tied to that query variable to match post meta fields. The meta query clause field located in the bottom allows you to input a custom name. This name can then be used in the order and offset meta query. If you are using multiple meta queries or even two queries with and without particular posts, posts that are included in this custom query will be prioritized based on the order type you select either appearing first or last in the results. This feature can be particularly useful for marketing purposes, such as when you want to promote your partners without making it too obvious. The last post query type is the date query, which allows sorting posts according to the date when they were created or modified. You can choose between creation or modification of the post as the sorting factor from a drop-down menu which also includes GMT options for when you want to handle time-based queries uniformly across different time zones. The following two input fields let you specify dates to retrieve posts after or before a certain time. As usual, you can source these values using dynamic tags options. Let's take a look at how relations work when applying multiple queries. First, I'll create a meta query checking the post title meta field using the no rejects operator and a rejects pattern that doesn't allow posts with digits in the title. Then I'll set up another meta query, this time requiring posts to have a word solar in their title meta field. Then I apply the AND relation between the two meta queries. The grid will display only those posts that both contain no numbers in the title and include the word solar. With the OR relation, the grid will show posts that meet either of the conditions – posts without numbers or posts that include solar. Now let's add a different query type, a text query. I'll configure it to require posts to have a term with the value AZ. Enabling this text query will narrow the list of displayed posts as the meta and text queries are now working together to yield results that meet both criteria in other words, intersections between the two query types. The text query relation setting becomes important only when you apply multiple text queries, but it doesn't impact how the meta and text queries interact. Let us know your thoughts on the post query and how it can be used to create dynamic site layouts in the comments below. If you find this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Crocoblog channel for more insightful content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.